You are now listening to the most talked about blog talk radio station in the universe. Walk in his ways, Impact Voice Radio. Be prepared to have your mind stimulated, your spirit elevated in ways you couldn't even imagine. Introducing your host and the mastermind behind this unforgettable experience, Furman Jackson Jr. You will not be disappointed. Let's go! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a exciting edition of Walking This Way's Impact Force Podcast. I'm your host, Furman Jackson Jr. I'm broadcasting live from my new home, my new location of Arlington, Texas, outside of Dallas and Fort Worth. Hope everybody had a great, productive Tuesday. We're with another edition here. I'm very excited about my uh, our guest this week. Um, very, I mean, you just learn stuff here by me being in Dallas. It's that you learn stuff every day you learn by different people different backgrounds but i think it's actually the first in history uh, having an entrepreneur a woman training other women to drive 18 wheelers and she reached out to me um via email and explained what she does and i think wow that's very exciting because i never known women to drive with 18 wheeler trucks and you got a woman teaching other women how to master it and all that be their own boss while they're driving 18 wheelers so that's very exciting to hear and know um once again i want to welcome everybody that's tuning in live with us joining in with us fellowshipping with us hope what will be said tonight will really incite you really impact you really motivate you really move you to the next level you may not be called to the to the to the trucking industry you may be called to other areas of business or entrepreneurships or wherever God may got you to go. But I hope what we say tonight will kind of, like I said, encourage you, motivate you, push you to the next level where God wants you to be at. So I want to welcome um, Delphine Foster um, to the podcast. Um, <laughs> she gave me the opportunity. She said, thank me for the opportunity. I said, thank her for the opportunity, for giving the opportunity. <laughs> I'm very humble, I'm very blessed, and very honored that you took time out to do um, Busy schedule, of course. But before we get started, we got Emo. Emo, welcome back. I know you were MIA. You back with us um, on a regular schedule. I know you got some some news that's taking place around our world. Before we get off into tonight's interview with our featured guest tonight. Hey everybody, I'm glad to be back. Welcome, Delphine. We are glad to have you on the show tonight. So guys, we're going to go straight into the news. I am absolutely 1000% positive that everyone that has been on any social media platform has heard about the issues that are surrounding Shakari Richardson. She is a young African American woman who is a track athlete at LSU University, and she is um, going on to compete in the Olympics. So there was some controversy surrounding her as she tested positive for marijuana uh, for her Olympic tryout test, drug test. So for her Olympic tryout drug test, she tested positive. So there was some questions about her possibly not being able to compete. So she uh, received a 30-day suspension, but she will be able to compete in the Olympics. So we are standing with her in her situation. She recently lost her mother. And my thing that I loved about her situation was even though she lost her mom and she had a lot of stress and things going on with her, she did an interview to take accountability for her drug use. So I haven't seen a lot of that in, um, I guess you could say, celebrities and young role models. So I was very proud of her situation where she took accountability. And she basically said, I made a poor choice. And we have all made poor cho choices in life. So we stand, we support her, and we are hoping that everything continues to work out on her behalf and that she'll make better choices in the future. But we do thank her for just being so transparent because as a parent, you have uh, role models out here that they are not taking accountability. So it sends the wrong message to our children. So, so Shikari, we thank you for taking that accountability. 
uh, other news for the parents out there. Everyone's been talking about the child tax credit. So child tax credits will start rolling. If you have a child uh, here in the U.S., those payments will start rolling out this month in July around the 15th, and they will continue through December, and it'll be a $300 a month payment. If you don't want to receive that payment, you have to log into the irs.gov and decline. So you have to opt out not to receive the payment. The payment could be as much as $3,600 rolling from July, starting July 15th through December, you'll receive a $300 monthly payment. And it's based on the age of your children and the amount of children that you have. So I will make sure that I link all of the stories tonight on our Facebook page so that you all can go back and review and get the information that you need. Also, I saw briefly today there was some ranting and raving going on about a man in New Orleans that... He made some racial, uh, made a racial rant against his neighbors. It was a white man, and he has been since arrested. So he made this rant on social media, and he was going off, and he spouted out his address, and people showed up, and it turned into a full blown protest. This man was arrested. So, uh, guys, pay attention to what's going on in your surroundings, just because people are. Spewing out racial slurs doesn't mean that you have to go and attack them. We can fight a different way. Make sure you're registered to vote. Make sure you're staying informed and make sure you're staying on top of political issues so that you can get the right people in office. Okay. All right, guys. That was the news that I have today. I'm ready for to get into the topic tonight. Awesome. Thank you, Emo, with the latest news and updates that's taking place around our world. We know things are always going on um, in our city, in our community, around the world. Um, but most importantly, we know that God is in control. We know that he is the great I am that I am. You know, we know he's the Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end. So no matter what we may go through or we may be experience or what may be before us, we know that he fights for us. I, look, I was sharing this with a young man when I was at work, and I'm in corrections um, where I made my livelihood at. And I, the young man said he deals with anger. Um, we all have anger. I said, what the Bible said, be angry at sin not. Don't allow your anger to turn into sin. Don't cause you to do something you're going to regret later on. But you got to realize you have to let God fight your battle. The Bible said, vengeance of mine, self, the Lord. So we have to learn how to let God fight our battles and let him deal with those situations because he's the God of justice. And we know that, especially if you're his child. But like I said, I'm very excited about tonight. We know here on Impact Voice, we have a sh extraordinary men and women who are doing great things in their community. They turn their dreams into reality to inspire the other listeners who inspire to be business owners, who inspire to be um, corporate America or wherever God may want you to go. Um, in this time, in this season. Um, I just, what I love about God, God does not limit himself. We put the limits on our own self. Um, God is outside the four walls. God is in every arena he want to use you in. Um, look at Daniel. You no, know, he used them in the political arenas. So God always want to use us in these big areas, entrepreneurs, your business owners, to get his mentions out, to get his name out to those who we do business with. So, Ms. Delphine, welcome to Walking This Way's Impact Voice Podcast. Thank you for taking time out to be the schedule. Um, once you gave me information about yourself, this is very interesting because I never known a woman who has her own academy training other women to be business owner when it comes to driving trucks. So introduce yourself to the, those that's listening here tonight on the podcast. Well, hello, and thank you so much. I love that introduction. My name is Delphine Price Foster, and I am a small business coach as well as a serial entrepreneur, I guess you could say, but all pertaining to the transportation industry. And I do own Six Figure Trucking Academy, where I do bring women into the trucking industry as trucking business owners. And that's a beautiful thing, because I never known uh, a woman, women, um, in the trucking industry, you know, a lot of men that be into the trucking industry, right. but I think it's, it's this, like I said, the first time in history, um, 
that are actual woman or woman of color um, is teaching women how to drive 18 wheelers? Well, I do way more than teach them how to drive an 18 wheeler, but um, there are other, I just first want to commend it's, it's other sisters that are doing this. Um, so I do want to most definitely recognize them. Um, so they've certainly done it before me. And um, there are some sisters that are actively currently um, have their own truck driving schools and also bring women into the trucking industry. So I am not the first, um, but I do thank God for giving me the assignment because this is an assignment for me uh, from God to help as many women as humanly possible to show them uh, that they can create generational wealth through the transportation industry. And that's, and that's awesome because I know our mindset, the way we think, um, especially people of color, and I said not, you know, just floating any other race, but I'm talking about from our community. That's right. Um, our mindset, the way we think, we don't mm -hmm. think um, generationally. If you look in the Bible, the Bible, the, the Bible talks about generations, mm -hmm. but we never think about the generation aspect. We think about the now. We don't think about our legacy. We don't think about our children. The Bible said a good man even has for his children and children. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm glad to see that people are thinking generationally now. So as far as being a businesswoman and knowing you for the first time, who is Delphine Foster? The woman? <laughs> well, Delphine Price Foster is, first of all, a woman of God, a woman who loves God, a woman who will give, give him all the praises. I don't care what the scenario is. He always gets the glory. And he is the reason that I am Delphine Price Foster. Um, I live in the Dallas Metroplex area. I've been in the area for going on 10 years currently. Um, I've been in the trucking industry, actually, since 1997. Um, and I've started out driving as my own trucking company. Um, and so of course, so many sisters have come to me over the years and say, you know, Delphine, you, you know, girl, you got it going on. You have an amazing business. Can you show me how to do it? So Delphine Price Foster is a sister who has a heart for people who loves to help. I mean, just un unconditionally love to help. More importantly, um, God gave me this assignment um, to help these sisters. Um, and that's what I'm here to do. That's that's what I do. I, that's what I eat, sleep and drink is blessing these sisters sisters and showing them how to create generational wealth within their families and leaving legacies, like you said, for their children's children. But Delphine Price Foster is also a wife. She's a mother. Um, I have um, I have one child of my own, but my husband has four children. And so I'm a mother of many children currently. Now, <laughs> I recently married five years ago. Um, so to God be the glory, my life is full. Uh, Delphine Price Foster is full. Um, I'm humble and I'm blessed. Man, and that's awesome. We know that five is grace. So <laughs> that's a beautiful number is grace. So no God is grace. That's my mother's name. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a beautiful day. Um, no, just a woman of character, a woman of noble character, a beautiful spirit, just by interacting with you here on tonight's podcast. And I said, that's just an interesting thing. And I know, you know, background, you've been in the business over 20 years. Which is, that's half a decade. And that's mm -hmm. a long time. So you're not mm -hmm. new to this. Um, <laughs> when it came to business, when it comes to entrepreneurship, does that run in your family? Oh, absolutely. My father has always had a trucking business. My father is 79 years old and he still has his own trucking business that he runs till this day. And so I've always seen entrepreneurship my entire life. Um, my father has never punched a time clock in my my lifetime. Um, back when I was younger, my mother used to have a small housekeeping business. So I was always brought up in the entrepreneur realm um, from back in the 70s, so 80s, 90s, and, and so where I am today. So it most definitely runs in my family, in my immediate family with both my parents. And wow. So it's, it's that bloodline because <laughs> I noticed, I remember my aunt, before I moved here to uh, Dallas, um, my aunt told me that my grandfather, he was an entrepreneur. He started his business um, at 13, a shoe shine business. Wow. So I didn't know that until she told wow. me that last year. So, but he been he passed away before I was born. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that that bloodline, that entrepreneurship, right. um, it makes me think about Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 818. For those who may not be familiar with Deuteronomy 818, um, Moses was getting instructions to the children of Israel that God gave us the ability to get wealth. They may establish code we made with our forefathers. You can look this up in Deuteronomy 8.18. Um, getting getting wealth. I know your passion, your drive to do what you do. I know it's a lot of people who want to be entrepreneurs. They don't know where to start. They don't know how to go about things. But as your experience as being an entrepreneur, 
give us some great advice for those who inspire to be entrepreneurs who don't know where to start at? Absolutely. Well, from what I've learned over the years, I think the smartest thing you can do, first of all, is make sure you check in with God. Make sure it's what he wants for your life, first and foremost, whatever form of entrepreneurship that it is. Then lock arms with someone who already has experience doing what you're doing. Um, very seldom are you going to start a business where you're creating a will, where you're, you know, there's someone else who's done it before you. And I think everyone should just humble themselves enough just to reach out to someone who's successful and say, hey, can you can you mentor me? Can you cut the learning curve off for me? Um, it took me so many years, so many years, just spinning my wheels, failing just miserably. Oh, my goodness all because I never reached out to a mentor. And after I got to a certain point in um, success, it is like the light went off. It's just like, I am not going to spend that many years trying to get to the next level as it took me to get to this level because I didn't seek help. So I most definitely say seek help, seek help. Um, but first and foremost, check in with God and make sure that this is your time now and that this is what he wants for you. That's what I would do first. And then reach out to someone. So that's important. So you heard a great advice for those who listen, those who are inspired. <laughs> and I love what you said. You said, chip with God for a minister that is God's will. Everybody's not called to entrepreneurship. That's right. Everybody's not called to business. Some people are just meant to be customers and clients yeah. and discern between <laughs> that. Because um, I know that God's will is important, of course. You know, if you look within the Lord's Prayer, we always said, thy will be done on mm -hmm. earth as it is in heaven. So God's will is very important for our lives. And Matthew 6, 33 said, well, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his rights and everything else is going to be added unto you. So to the trucking industry, um, how did that come about bringing women into the transportation industry? Well, in within our community, we all know somebody, somebody's uncle, daddy, granddaddy, neighbor down the street is in trucking. Most of us know that person is a man. So when women want to figure out how to do this, the first thing they do is go to the guy down the street whose cousin does that. And the first thing, nine times out of 10, our brothers, because y'all love us so much, they'll tell us, oh, no, you don't want to do that. Oh, no, it's too hard. And I understand the brothers want to protect us. I understand that. But that's not always the best thing for us. So that's why I go so hard for women, because I know for a fact that the reject they're getting rejected on every level when they're coming to, to our brothers, asking for advice how to do this. Um, so that's why I go. That's why I strictly go for the women, try and help them out, especially single moms, because I started my business as a single mom. Yeah, and big up to y'all women, because y'all women, y'all carry a lot. Yeah, They're cheering for nine months. Y'all deal with us hard-headed jokers all the time. But <laughs> God cooked y'all to be strong Preach. women. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I'm just saying. But yes. That, and you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, definitely, you made me think about when the Bible said that God made it help me for Adam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we forget about that part. You know, hear men always say, I'm the head, but we never hear the woman say, I'm the help me. Or the man acknowledge his wife as to help me because we cannot do it by ourselves. And I just believe that if you with somebody, that person you with, your wife could see something that you may not see, but as men, we have to humble ourselves and take heed until um, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying is to your wife, to you. So. I respect that, uh, but <laughs> Thank you. that help me is very important. So we, men, we can't do everything. Women got to help us out too. We got to help each other. We That's complement right. each other. That's um, absolutely so correct. But there's, first, go ahead. Go ahead. but I was going to say within within our community, then is, is a high rate of single parents, single single women households, single parent households, and these sisters need relief. Be something else besides an income tax check on the April fifteenth. And that's what I try to show them that income tax check that you get on April 15th. Let me show you how you can get an income tax check every week with this trucking business. Let me show you how you could change, change this up because within our community, that's, we, we suffer with that. We, there's too many single parent households. So it is. <laughs> and it, I'm glad you brought that up because people of color, as I say, we get so excited about income tax season. And mm -hmm. it's not, not, I know people don't think that's being harsh, but I just get tired of seeing us always talk about income tax season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
entrepreneurs, people, you don't see LeBron James talking about no income tax yet. <laughs> you don't see Michael Jordan talking about no income tax. Mm-hmm. You don't see Oprah, Tyler Perry, mm-hmm. because they make that type of money every day. That's, That's right. like a regular payday for them That's right. and more. But I love your mindset, how you want to engage these women. And like I said, single mothers, I, and I really hate it for the single mothers because they take on so much. That's right. You had to play both roles. The man is not present. And I'm just going to put it out there to the fellas. Think with the wrong head gets you in a world of trouble. Use the head that God gave you. I'm not talking about the woman between you and your pain. I'm just being real. Because we don't never think with this head on top of our shoulders. We think with the wrong uh, body part. And I hope that men will be encouraged, step up to the plate, and really be and feel God's playing here on earth. Um, so give us a background on your first truck oh. and how was it <laughs> and how was your experience and what was your mindset at that time? Ooh, yes, sir. I'll be happy to share with you all. Um, I'll just give a little background. At that time, when I got my first truck, my first husband at that time had got life in prison and it sent me into such a terrible depression. And so long story short, I, um, I just needed a time out. So I got on section eight and welfare. Um, That lasted for about 30 days because my energy, (laughs) once I got my energy back, I was ready to go. Well, I found out that the welfare in the state that I lived at that time had a program. And it said that if you agree not to come back on welfare for a year, we'll give you a grant. We'll give you 10 months worth of your welfare up front. And my welfare back then was $440 and I got $4,400. And I ended up scouting out a lady who had a truck for sale. Her name is Miss Myrna. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I ended up giving her $1,000 down for this truck. I ended up paying like $1,500 down for the insurance. And I was in business. Now, mind you, this truck was not pretty. You could see the, the ground from outside, from inside. You could see the ground. <laughs> no heat. And I was actually in the Pacific Northwest back then. So it was cold. But the determination in the wheel, I was so proud of myself to get out to that raggedy truck every single day and then for it to start up and see that smoke coming out that stack pipe because I knew I was going to change every single day. I had another opportunity to change me and my daughter's life. And to God be the glory, I've never been back on welfare or Section 8 housing. I was able to give them back their Section 8 housing within 60 days of me starting my business. <laughs> and I've never seen a welfare check or food stamps again. So, <laughs> and, that, and that's beautiful to hear that. It really is. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing wrong with being on that. Okay, you start off on that. Don't end your whole entire life on that mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. You know, not only that, that system trains on down to the children. There you go. And we got to break that cycle. There you go. I know you had a six-figure academy. The truck mm-hmm. six-figure trucking academy. Mm-hmm. Six-figure, that's different. That's a different name for academy. It's unique. How did that come about with the name Six Figures? Well, because I first of all, I learned that six figures is very easy to obtain. And most of the time, if I speak to a sister about six figures, they'd be like, ooh, six figures. I, I'd never make that kind of money. Oh, yes, you will make that kind of money. You are very capable and you're deserving of it. Um, so that's that's what made it stick out to me because a lot of our sisters don't, they've never earned six figures within their careers um, and they don't see it as attainable. And so that, do, that does get their attention. Yeah, because I know that all, the, because of God, all things are possible. For yes, you. right. Um, the mindset, you know, the mm-hmm. book that I have been reading as of late is Relentless um, by Tim Tim Rose. He trained Michael Jordan, he trained Kobe Bryant, and many other than Wayne okay. Wade. And the way that these guys attack their industry when it comes to being athletes, how they was all about winning. Um, not just for athletes, but in business. I know being a CEO, being a business owner, you have that, that go-getter spirit Mm-hmm. that hustle mentality of succeeding in mm-hmm. business, driving to be the head honcho, to be the top boss in the industry. So with your motivation, first of all, what what do you get your motivation from as being a trailblazer in your industry? Um, just seeing the success of the other sisters. So for the trucking, my trucking motivation is totally different than my school motivation. You know, when I started my trucking business, it was for my last name. My school is for infinity. It's it's helping 
hundreds and thousands of people's last names. So the motivation is totally different for both sides. But back then for the trucking side, it was most definitely because I was a single mom. It was to raise my daughter, you know, and I just wouldn't want to say this. My daughter is 25 years old and she has her own trucking business and she's never seen welfare or Section 8 and never will because I broke that curse. Um, so that was first and foremost, that was my motivation for the trucking side. But for the school side, it's for all the generations that I have been able to touch just by showing them this one skill. Man, that's beautiful. And I know it really goes into the next question. Uh-oh. Um, so everybody, <laughs> like, what is the six figure, what is the six figure trucking academy about? Okay. I mean, you already explained that. Um, how can for those who are interested, how can women mm -hmm. sign up? How can they be a part of the trucking academy? Absolutely. You would just go to sixfiguretruckingacademy.com. On my website, you can find my Facebook group, my community. You can come in there, um, sign up, sign up to come into our community. You'll be amongst thousands of sisters who have the same exact goals and like mind as yourself. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook under sixfiguretruckingacademy.com. And that's how you can always find me. That sums it up right there. And <laughs> going to the next question, as it's been as owner for over 20 years, what would you consider your greatest highlight in, in your business? This will sound, this may sound really small to some people, but you remember I was telling you about that $440 welfare check that I used to get. Mm -hmm. The first time that I earned that in a day, I think I cried that whole day because I achieved it like before 5 p.m. or whatever the case may be, it was something simple. Um, and so then it's when I also, another highlight to me was when I learned what it took to make six figures. And I was able to just achieve that over and over again. But my last biggest highlight has been what it takes to make seven figures. $2,750 a day equals $19,260 a week. And once I've learned how to conquer that and do it 52 weeks in a year, that has been my absolute highlight of making a million over a million dollars every single year just by knowing that one number, two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars a day. Wow, and that's a lot. But I hear your passion, I hear your drive, and it's something that you love to do. Absolutely, and people forget about that. People forget about their passion. You know, like we were talking with Richard earlier, the Michael Jordan, the Kobe mm -hmm. Bryant, they was passionate about their being basketball player, and they perfect their crowd. And mm -hmm. I know you passionate about what you do in perfecting your craft and loving what you're doing, having fun doing what you're doing. So when you teach what you no know, encourage women teaching these women, mm -hmm. what would be the what's the first lesson within the, the academy that you teach the women? Let's Their see. First here. Lesson. That is a really good question. I'm sorry. Um well because they're coming in as business owners making them set their house up, getting their house up in order, you know, letting them know that we, you need a real email address. You need an address for your business. I don't want you running your business out of your home. Let's set this up as a Fortune 500 com company. Um, so helping them do that is like one of the first things that I help people do. Um, Cause 99% of them come to me, they don't even have a business name. It's just an idea. Um, and normally within that first two weeks, they have their business totally up and running legally. Um, as a business address, business email address. Um, I don't too, get too much into the whole website thing. Um, the EIN numbers, their bank accounts. So helping them set their business up as a real business is is the first thing that I help them do. Awesome. And my next question is, what kind of culture is this in your organization and how do you establish it? Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, please. Oh, I said, what kind of culture is this in your, is this in your organization and how do you establish it? Straight family. It is absolutely, absolute family. And once again, for my organization, I have the trucking, I have two trucking businesses, plus I have the school. And in both of my cultures is, both of my organizations is the same exact identical culture, which is family. And that means that I break bread with anyone. I pray for, pray with anyone and everyone is treated as family. Um, if I have a get together at my house, everyone's invited. I'm actually having a get together at my home this weekend. Everybody's invited. All my drivers who drive my trucks, my dispatcher, everyone comes to my cookouts. Um, they're family. They're not. They're not a number at all. And, and that's beautiful. That the people that work within your organization, you treat them as family. And I know, as you being a CEO, you being a business owner, you want to help build up the morale mm -hmm. of those who work within your organization. So, as take us through the, the steps by step, as you being a business owner, working with other people, working within your organization, how do 
you set the atmosphere on a regular basis because that's very big. I, I never known big owners to you know invite people that work with but then to their homes because they keep everything separated. <laughs> well, it might be by default. I'm not sure, <laughs> but um, I, I'm a crybaby first and foremost. So in my truck inside, it used to be when the when people I would say guys, but I have a lot of ladies work for me now as well. So when the ones that are going out over the road, we do a circle before they get in the trucks on Sunday. And we pray, and I'm I cry when I see my trucks leaving out the yard. And so now the rule is I have to go inside before everybody can leave out because they know I'm going to be standing there crying and everybody be calling me back saying, I'm just checking on you, see if you're okay, because it touches me that way. In my academy, every time a sister buys a truck and they will tell you, I cry. Every single one of them. <laughs> I don't care if they bought a $6,000 truck or a $60,000 truck. I'm just so happy for them because I know their life just changed. Um, so that's why I say it's by default because I'm a crybaby, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and uh man so like i said it's a beautiful spirit i know that's why god bless you because of your heart um for his people and you helping his people get to the next level yeah, um okay. emo do you have any questions that you want to um ask um definitely i guess she got quiet yeah she had time. She had time i couldn't get off mute i was stuck okay. on mute so i um so I did want to ask you this question. Which electronic logging system are y'all using? I use a couple different ones. It, it depends on the urgency of whether or not which one I use. There is a free one that a lot of people don't know about. It's called Haulings, H-A-U-L-Y-N-X. But you got to have time. You got to already be able to order it and have it come to you. But if I just bought a right. truck this weekend and the truck needs to go out on Monday, I'm going to go to the truck stop and just get whatever's on the shelf. So they all do the same <laughs> thing to me. So I'm going to get a Transflow or, or or whatever one is on the shelf um, because they okay. all do the same thing to me. And I've, I always ask anybody that tells me that they're in trucking, I always ask them that because I used to be the safety manager for a trucking company mm -hmm. and I was over their electronic logging. So I had to constantly keep checking the logs and doing things like this. So I always <laughs> ask. Yes. For especially um, with the whole DOT audits that we have. You yes. Know, everything's <laughs> got to be in order. Most definitely got to be in order. <laughs> but yeah, so that so, was me. <laughs> So yeah, those are that, that it just totally depends on the scenario. Um, when I purchase a truck, you know, if I have already have a truck and it's at the yard and I have time to send in the VIN number and know the ports and wait for the mail, then I'll normally go with the free one, which is called Hall Links. But if I need to purchase one, I'll just go to the truck stop and get one. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. As long as you're compliant, right? <laughs> right. That's all that matters. That's it. That's it. And the same thing with the ladies that I help in the academy It's the same exact scenario for them. That's right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I said, that's a beautiful thing, really. And being in compliance, of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> Definitely. Compliance is a lot when you're uh, in trucking. It is. It is a huge part of what you're doing. So just being in com compliance and regulation, that's like top priority. It is. And I like what you're doing, how you yeah. have structured your company to be strictly family. I think that is uh, amazing and a blessing because so many times, like you were saying, a lot of your ladies might be single moms. You started out as a single mom. So just having someone take you in as a part of their family, that's always a plus. I know I've seen a lot of ladies that were single moms and getting in that truck and their su support system sometimes would be a little shaky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know trying to get on that road knowing that you might have to go over the road to mm -hmm. you know support and do what you have to for your kids so just knowing that there is a company there trying to be a support system calling you family that's a plus all by itself especially oh, in our community absolutely absolutely and just mind you that for the sisters i also help sisters who are not interested in driving <clears throat> um and i help i show them how to hire uh dot qualified drivers um so there is some like you said who don't have a support system or um or, or not in, interested in driving at all you know my motto is that every sister should have at least one truck running operating in her portfolio of investments um <clears throat> especially the, the more investment savvy sisters who already have rental properties airbnb stocks then i must right. definitely think you should implement a yes. truck into your portfolio of investments so i do go um most definitely am available to help both both types of sisters and awesome 
And my next question is, this is not for the weak at heart. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I'm going to ask this one. How many hours a day do you work on average? Because I know CEOs, mm -hmm. business owners put in work. Yes, we and do. People that get the mindset thinking, okay, I run a business. I can work when I want to work. <laughs> else, but when you start now, you're going to have to be really putting in some work. So True. how many okay. hours well, a I day work you do it? Okay, 16 and a half hours a day, generally. I work 100 hours a week. Um, I slowed down from 120 hours a week. I've been working like this for about 15, 16 years. Um, so I don't know how to slow down, maybe. <laughs> but, um, but when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work anyway. But I, my, you know, I always worked 100 hours a week. So it, it equals out to about 16 and, a half, 16, 16 and a half hours a day. And I take off one day a week on the weekends to spend time with my hubby. Oh, and that's because I said, because people think that being an entrepreneur, they think that I could do it one day, then chill the <laughs> next day. But it's more, it's work and doing it, it what is you work. love to do. And it's being established. And that's and which is very important about. to me. Yes, which is very important to me. And especially as an entrepreneur, your my mind does... <laughs> my mind is just moving like this all the time anyway. So for me to sit and watch a movie or some, there's no, it, it would never happen. So my mind couldn't sit still that long because I always got so many great ideas that I'm downloading or trying to perfect what I already got going on. So that to me, that's a part of work as well. Um, just perfecting what I already have going on. But, um, but yeah, that's how I work a hundred hours a week. That is my limit. Well, that's why I would ask that question. So that I said, that's not for the weak at heart. Mm -mm. If you're not willing to put it in the word, then don't do it. <laughs> I'm, just gonna yeah. I'm gonna leave that one alone now one. Okay. my next question is how do you build a successful customer base when I ask that question because I know you got those who get rich quit schemes they wanna um, get over on other people they wanna manipulate other people and I know you mentioned how you build your morale up in your organization mm -hmm. so how do you build a successful customer um, mm -hmm. base when it comes to your customers? Okay. Well, once again, because I have two different organizations on my trucking side, I am who I am. I am who I, who I say that I am. I show up. I do. If I said it, it's going to be done. My word is my bond. My name is all that I have. And that's how I, that's how I establish my customer base. I don't care if you call one of my customers in Chicago or you call a customer in Hawaii. If they mention the name Delphine, they're going to like, oh, yeah, I know her. She's going to do what she says she's going to do. And I, I go be uh, above and beyond to make sure that my name, <laughs> when, my, when my name is spoken, that everyone can say the same thing about me. Now, on the, the, the school side, once again, it's the nurture and loving side of me. But two, anyone knows, anyone within my school, my academy, they can always pick up the phone and call me. I might be busy, but I'm I'm going to answer and say, hey, I'm I'm tied up, but I will call you back. Or they might message me, I, I'm acknowledging you. I see that you're trying to get a hold of me. I'm tied up. I will get back to you. And I get back to everyone. My name is all that I have. And that's how I establish that that base on both sides. Awesome stuff. And I know entrepreneurs read a lot of books. So do you read any books and like we have time to read? You're gonna laugh. You're gonna laugh at the book that I'm reading currently. It's called The Four Hour Work Week. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke I know <laughs> that is the book that I'm currently reading called the four hour work week <laughs> Boy, let, let everybody that's my first time ever hearing that book so in, enlighten us on what the book is about for those who you know probably want to know about a book or okay. Okay. on Amazon I, right I need to, to know about that <laughs> Well, it's 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 a guy who utilizes VAs to help him. I have a whole army of VAs that I use. Um, all of my team used to be US based, um, but I end up outsourcing. I'm not outsourcing, but I end up taking my team overseas. Um, so now I strictly hire out of Manila, Philippines. And I, when I tell you I have an army, I have an army of people who work for me in the Philippines. And his book is basically saying how I should be structuring my my my. Um, my VAs to where the only thing I should be doing is just kind of overseeing everything and just taking a quick look in and I could be done for the week. Uh, 
So I guess in his line of work, that kind of works. In mine, I will still want to be more hands-on. Uh, I feel like I deal with a lot of money and nobody touches my money but me. No one does any invoicing with me. I need to make sure that all the things are the way I need it to be. So I, ha I have a long way to go to get to my four-hour work week, but it just intrigued me how he was able to utilize the VAs to, to live his to live out his dream of having a four-hour work week. And I, I have already implemented some of his strategies with my VAs, and I will continue to uh, implement more. Um, that is very interesting. Do you know, <laughs> I trained a lot of uh, VAs from the Philippines mm -hmm. and also from um, South uh, South America, uh, Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Okay. Yeah. So I, I did a lot of training for them as far as uh, teaching them uh, what to look for in compliant uh, logs. Interesting. So, yeah, that okay. is a huge thing <laughs> in trucking. So that's like a big thing, but yeah, they, uh, the company, well, any market. With, they end up outsourcing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're my employees. They work directly for me, but I just find that, um, the Manila and Manila, i I can deal with the accents a little bit better. They're on the phones for me constantly. Um, yes. I, I just use ring central and I can <laughs> tap in and listen to anybody's call and their accent doesn't overtake the call or anything like yes. that. They're not shy or intimidated. So, I mean, that's just a personal preference. I just went on Craigslist Manila and just started running ads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like I said, uh, I mean, Miss Duffy, you do, you do a lot of great things. Um, <laughs> being a light into the community, helping women get to the point where they need to be at. And they, when I say need to be in their lives, not only that just for them, but also for their family. Like we were talking yes, about sir. earlier, you know, a good man even has for children's insurance. So you want to leave that inheritance um, for your family. My last and final question, I know you're pressing for time, I know you're a busy woman and won't want to prolong the time. But my last question is, how do you view your legacy in the transportation industry? I view it as infinity. I want to be able to help so many trucking businesses that a whole generation of our children's children never have to go to work for no one else because they already have trucking businesses in within their families. It just infinity, at no limit to it whatsoever. That's how I view my legacy. And I'm glad you mentioned that, um, children. I noticed now people, parents are teaching their children about entrepreneurship and they encourage their children to do that. You know, back in the day, you was taught to get a job, mm -hmm. get yes, a right. job 20 some years, retire and you think retirement, I'm living a good life. <laughs> but breaking yeah. that mindset of you know, teaching our children, because we all got gifts, everybody got a gift. That's the right. Bible said our gifts should make room for us. Everybody yes. got a gift. Yes. But I know it's up to us to utilize our gifts that God's given us because I know in a parable, he got mad at one servant because he called him a lazy servant because he didn't utilize his gift. He was lazy. Mm -hmm. And we know that God does not want lazy people <laughs> in the kingdom. You gotta, you know, you gotta utilize that gift. So you mentioned earlier about your daughter. Your daughter is an entrepreneur, correct? Yes, and she has a trucking business, uh-huh. Wow. Um, what advice would you give a parent as you being a parent yourself to know may inspire their children of the entrepreneur or help them utilize their gifts we all got gifts mm -hmm. we just never well, utilize our gifts continue to help your children i know a lot of people are like oh child they 18 let's kick them out the house they on their own no 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 i don't believe in that at all i believe you help them until they're able to fly don't just clip their wings and they can't fly yet um help them love on them show them the proper way to run a business i mean even though my daughter is 25 I gave her two trucks and I gave her a customer that I had. So, I mean, of course, yes, she was set up more than the average person, but I still have to groom her on a daily basis, not to be cursing people out. Don't be doing this. Don't be doing that. Make sure the trucks is right. I continue to still work with my daughter who's 25. I'm, I might see her maybe once a week or what have you, but I'm, I'm constantly grooming her. So that's the advice I would give the parents. Um, if you're, if you're trying to have children that are entrepreneurs, don't make them feel like they have to do it all by themselves. Help them. They will get it. And that sums it up right there. <laughs> um, Emo, you have any last question you want to ask um, Delphine before we get out the air? Sorry, 
So I, I like what you said about don't just drop your children at 18. <laughs> <laughs> that is like something that needs to be said constantly mm-hmm. and on a daily basis, especially in our community. Mm-hmm. Um, I see it time and time again. We are in the process now. Uh, we have a daughter. She just graduated high school. She'll be going to college here at the University of South Alabama. So we are like looking to see how we can set her up in a condo instead of her getting an mm-hmm. apartment and mm-hmm. paying into that. Mm-hmm. Let's get the condo. It's mm-hmm. the same principle. Mm-hmm. And in a few years, she'll own it. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. That's that's my that's my absolute biggest advice is just stick in there with them. Yes. And even after she graduates from college, still continue to guide her. Yes. As long as they have yes. a teachable spirit, continue. why wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Keep <laughs> adding because that allows your children to be teachable. If you are constantly teaching them and mm-hmm. working with them, that allows them to be teachable in other settings as well. I love that. I love that. I love that. Yes, it does allow them to be teachable in other settings. I, I'm like, I'm a strong advocate for that. My, I have a sister who has a trucking business and she has five children. And I mean, the, the love and energy that she pours into them out of the five, four of them have trucking businesses now. And these are young, young men. The youngest one is 17 yes. and he has the most trucks. He has seven trucks, but because yes. of the, <laughs> yes, ma'am, but the nurturing that she gives to them, you know, but, but, but we get that from our father because our father has always nurtured us. <laughs> so I guess that's where we get that from. But even if it doesn't come naturally for you, just take it from me that it's a wise choice to really love and nurture your young adults into to entrepreneurship because it will, it'll benefit them. And besides that, we're going to get old. So we're going to need these kids to take care of us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because I always tell my kids, like, you you better not put me on a home. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> but if they have to go punch a time clock and they don't have their own businesses, then they might they might not have time for you. But if they if you already have to have a successful business for 20 years and they have, you know, they'll have the money, time, and resources to see about you. So so that that's any incentive. <laughs> oh, right. I mean, it, pay, it makes sense. It really do. It really <laughs> makes a lot of sense because your time's not being tied up on nobody else's life. You better do mm-hmm. the things you need to do. Help mm-hmm. your family out, get everything established. So I agree with that 100%. That's right. 100%. So, as you've been our featured guest for this evening, do you have any final remarks for the list of audience? Because like I said, it's going to go on YouTube, it's going to be up on Spotify, it's going to be up on iHeart, it's going to be up on Apple Podcasts. Yes, my last final comment to my sisters is that every one of you all can have a truck operating in your portfolio of investments. You deserve it and so does your children. Reach out to me and I can help you get there. Once again, um, Delphine, give your contact information, email, how can they get in contact with you or if they're interested in you know, being a part of the academy mm-hmm. or just other business ventures. Absolutely. Once again, I am at sixfiguretruckingacademy.com and the six is spelled out. So it's sixfiguretruckingacademy.com. My Facebook group is called Sis. Let me help you build your trucking business. So you can reach me there as well. Or you can email me at info at sixfiguretruckingacademy.com. And I answer everyone's email, everyone's message. Even if you want to message me on Facebook, my Facebook name is Delphine Price Foster. I am here for you. No question is a dumb question, only the ones that you don't ask. Even if you don't can't even put it into words, let's just hop on a call and we'll figure it out. I'll help you put it into words. You deserve this and you can do this. And that's what's up right there. And that all sums it up. <laughs> Hope everybody have a great productive Tuesday. Hope everybody get everything done. Keep yourself inspire keep yourself motivated but most importantly always keep god first that's the most important thing if we keep him first he will see us through we gotta keep that balance because without him he'll take that stuff away yes. so god make sure we gotta keep him first and knowledge him first the bible said lean not to our own understanding but knowledge him he should make our pathway straight so we got knowledge him uh, from this point forward so we will be back next tuesday night at the same time 7 p.m central 8 p.m. on the East Coast. We got another very extraordinary woman that's going to be joining us here. I have a very lot of extraordinary women for the month of July that's mm-hmm. mastering the business and the corporate world. Fellas, the women are out doing y'all, really. Because air, air, no offense to the fellas, it's like when it comes to the podcast, women always respond back. They, it's, and I'm not knocking the fellas. It's that 
y'all women are doing more than compared to the average black man today. I'm just being, I'm just, just being honest. It's like more women respond quicker than the fellas do. I have fellas that, that comes on, but it's mostly like the women are mastering the business world. So fellas, step your game up because the women are doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? But we thank God for y'all because God made y'all, y'all a gift to man, as Paul put it. So we have, we thank, we thank God for y'all women for doing great things. Thank y'all you. are mothers, y'all everything. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> so that all sums it up. We're going to be back next Tuesday. Lord willing to stay the same. So we want everybody to have a great evening. Love on somebody. Check, matter of fact, check on someone. We know that people are going through stuff. You never know what somebody may be going through. You may not know what I'm just thinking or what's on their mind. Suicide is real. Mental health is real. We've been talking about this on the podcast as of late. Just check on somebody. Is God put some on your heart? Call them. Matter of fact, just pick up the phone. Don't even text. Just pick up the phone. Because we so complacent when it comes to text. And just pick up the phone so that person can hear your voice. Because you never know that one phone call can save his or her life who may thought about taking their life. And I just want to leave y'all with that note. So we want y'all to be blessed. See y'all next time here on the podcast. Have a blessed night. And most importantly, Matthew 6.33. Keep Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, everything else will be added unto you. So we'll see you next time. Peace.